uh, it's a currently 11 16 at night I should have been in the bed all of probably two hours ago um, there's a good reason why I'm still awake but then there's also a not good reason I'm so awake and haven't picked up the camera in a while and um, I figured the next time I picked it up, it was going to be to do like a real time, like, hey, y'all, and then talk through all of the footage that I have over the last several months. Um, just because I feel like at this point, it is entirely too, <laughs> too far past the time when these actual videos were recorded for me to just put them up like hey and put the date on there like April <laughs> and it's like sis it's almost September what are you doing so my plan was to talk through the footage but I haven't looked through the footage yet to figure out what to say and then tonight happened which is this is the real I really don't have anyone to call in this moment I mean I could call and wake some people up but that's kind of inconsiderate, considering tomorrow is Monday, and we all have to work in the morning. Um, yeah. I'm, it's just me. And all the feels. And it's just a very gross place to be. Um, here by myself, obviously, because I live alone. And so... When these waves of emotions come, it's just me. And um, I served all weekend at church and I'm around people and I can show up on social media. And so, and not that those moments are fake because they're not, but because I can do that and spend time with people and do all of that, um, it's sort of assumed that you're okay. And it frustrates me that I'm not okay. It really frustrates me, y'all. Because, man, if only grief was linear. If only grief meant the worst day would be the worst that it would get. And that there wouldn't be a day worse than the worst day. Or that you hit rock bottom, so there's only up from here. If I could just pay for that to be reality, I would pay big money. I would pay big money for that to be my reality. Because what I am is over this, y'all. If I could just be real, what I am is over this. I am a joyful person. I am a happy person. I am positive and I mean I'm not perfect in that area but if you know me that is my get down I am a positive person and I speak that over other people and I can't I feel like I'm not able to show up in the world right now how I want to show up and it is so It is so frustrating, y'all. I had a good week. Overall, I had a good week. Generally speaking, I had a good week. And I can say that because my other weeks have been so not good that I know last week, even though it wasn't spectacular, it was a good week. And I just be wanting to hold on to that a little longer. Then I had an incredible weekend at church. And just so much positive and, and just so many positive feelings. And there's such a freedom in the presence of God. If you know, you know. And so when I'm there, it is freedom and it is clarity and it is one foot in front of the other. And it is, I'm going to see a victory, which is one of the songs that we sang this weekend. And then, just like the enemy, I feel like I get out of those safe spaces or I'm not around people anymore to laugh and to, um, you know, have a distraction. 
And all it takes is one trigger. All it takes is one small thing or sometimes one big thing and I'm here. And it is so frustrating, y'all. Like, a girl just wants to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to be okay. And I get that I don't have to share this. And I... I don't know. Maybe this video will make it. Maybe it won't. But, um... I just... Man, it is such an odd feeling. Like, this past week, I've been feeling hope. I've been feeling glimmers of joy, and I know it's there, and I'm not giving up on it. But, like, this space right here, for the birds. Like, I would pay literal money to just be done with this here. Um, and I'm sure it's a lot of things all at the same time. This is a very transitional season for me. I'm assuming that I've talked about it, but I, I literally can't remember what I've recorded because I don't even know. There was a pattern to it. Um, but I'm moving in three weeks. I'm moving out, <laughs> let's say that. Um, I think I have somewhere to go, but that's kind of up in the air. I wasn't planning at all to have to move, and so I'm starting to pack my things. Um, so, like, my bookcases in my office are pretty much, um, close to empty. I've been taking a big tote bag of my books to my work office because I have a bookshelf there. Um, so that'll help me not have to carry textbooks and all my college books and all them heavy books around through storage and whatever. But everything is transitional right now. Um. I'm still fairly new in my new position at my job. Um, my housing is about to be a toss-up. It, it feels that way. God is working it out, but I'm leaving my space. Um, I have to sell a couple things. I have to pack. Um, and nothing looks like what I thought this year was going to look like. And that is a hard thing to grieve, y'all. Let me tell you. That is a hard thing to grieve when it's like nothing is familiar. Everything is transitional. Everything is a toss-up. I mean, thank God for my church. Because the community that I have there is probably the most stable thing I have right now, and aside from my family. But this journey is still so individual. It's so, like no one, people can walk alongside you while you go through something like this. But you still gotta walk through it. It's just a lot. I don't even know if what I'm saying makes any sense at all. But I just need to talk it out. It's been hard to pray, but I'm like, maybe if I just talk it out, the Lord will hear me. And he'll hear my heart and the words that I say. I know I'm not the first person in the world to walk through something like this, which in some way is encouraging. So maybe if one of you are watching and you see me walking through this, that you will have hope and, and at the very least some comfort that you're not the first person to ever walk through something like this. Um. I just really want to be okay, y'all. I really want to be okay. That's all I can say. I yearn for the day where it doesn't hurt so bad, you know? 
a year for the day where things just make sense again, you know? So, tonight is hard. So, that's why I'm here. I just needed to talk it out, I guess. I think I'm gonna try to take my makeup off from the day and get in the bed. And then uh what was I just thinking? Oh, I need to pack another tote bag of books to take to work tomorrow. Oh, and to add to why I'm probably triggered tonight and emotional. Is I've been doing every plate, <laughs> which is like HelloFresh, which allows me to have my meals for the week. And they freaking delivered my box to God knows where. The picture is of some house somewhere. And I live in a whole apartment complex. So wherever y'all thought y'all delivered that box to, God bless you. But it ain't my house. So I don't have my meals because I wasn't grocery shopping other than to like fill in the blanks. I don't have my meals for this week. So I have to grocery shop slash figure out my own meals. <laughs> Which sounds like such a first world problem but this has really been helping me stay healthy and stay on eating because I have not been eating. Don't know if I've said that but one of the symptoms of heartbreak and grief apparently is you don't want to eat. Either that or you eat everything. But I haven't got to the eat everything part yet. I've just been starving myself, I guess. And every plate was helping me do better and eat two meals a day. And then they didn't bring my box. So now that's just another reason for me to cry. Because now I fear I'm going to struggle to eat this week. And they don't know that when they mess up and leave your box on somebody else's doorstep. That it means that much to you. This is probably real dramatic. <laughs> uh, but I want my box. <laughs> and then I messaged the people and they were like, well, we can't send another box. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. But we use a something something supplier and... So you won't be able to get a box this week, but we can credit it to your account plus the shipping fee. I don't want to credit. I don't want to credit. I want my groceries so I can cook my meals. So now I don't have to. I don't have lunch tomorrow. I don't want to spend money on lunch, but if I decide to eat at work, I'm gonna have to buy my lunch. <sighs> Y'all. Maybe I'm spiraling, and at this point, I should probably cut the camera off. <laughs> Anyways. Grief is not linear. That is the point of this video. And at this point, it's 15 minutes long. I don't know what I'm going to use, but I probably should not. I probably should not add this to another video. Maybe this is its own video. I don't know. <laughs> My brain. Uh, I guess this is a how I'm doing update. I can do that since I've just been gone. I'm okay. Well, am I okay? I don't know. I am here. I am here. Um, I got my hair done. I got full locks. They're kind of in a situation because we were at uh, beach baptisms today at the lake with my church and it was like 90 degrees today so I had to halfway do it up but I got faux locks last Tuesday and I love them they make me feel very pretty because I've been feeling very hideous and masculine lately I know I've said that on here before I know I've said that 
at least once in this random footage I have. But anywho, they feel they make me feel very feminine. I've been wearing a little bit of makeup every once in a while since having them in and I've just been feeling very good about myself which I haven't felt in a minute so that's a good thing um my new job even though I don't even know if you guys know about it because I haven't gotten to that place in the footage yet I will at some point but my job is going well Surprisingly, I know compared to what I was experiencing before with my job, I was very stuck and felt all the feels, but it's actually going well and it's a lot more responsibility, but so far my head is still above water. And so we say thank you, Jesus. Um, church is fantastic. I feel like I could say that every time I'm on here, but like, thank God for one church because this season of my life would, I, I'm not even gonna think about what this season of my life would be without my church. I'm not even gonna think about it because that'll make me cry. So, um, yeah, I'm here and if you're curious of whether I still have awkward encounters of people asking me if I'm engaged, the answer is yes. Surprisingly, I had gone a long stretch after making it public. I went a very long stretch without anyone asking, no awkward situations. It was great. I was right in that wave. And then this weekend happened and I got approached three times. And I had very painfully awkward conversations, but I am hanging in there. To be honest, y'all, I still have to process that this is my life because I feel like it's a sitcom that I forgot to turn off in the middle of the night. You know, when you wake up to like George Lopez or something or like Jerry Springer or whatever at like 2 a.m. and you're like, oh, wow. And you feel like what was on the TV had become part of your dream and you thought you were living it out but then you realize, oh, I just need to wake up and turn the TV off. That is how I feel about my life right now. <laughs> like, I am struggling with accepting that this is my life. I don't want this as part of my story, y'all. I feel like I've worked very hard in my life to live honorably, not perfect by any means, but like I treat people with kindness and I am loyal and I am committed and I try to do right by people. So I just can't believe, I mean, bad things happen to everybody, regardless of what you do. And that is part of the maturity lesson that I'm getting in all of this is like, no one is exempt from life. Life just be life in. But still, if I'm being honest with you, I am very just in disbelief. I'm in disbelief that this is part of my story and I'm struggling very hard to accept it. Um, so, I don't know if there's a point to this video. Um, but it helped me to get out some emotions that I was really struggling to get out for the last like 12 hours, maybe less than that. This evening, I've been like fighting with like, I feel like I'm emotional, I feel like I need to cry. But then I'm like, no, you're fine, you're okay, you got this. <sighs> you're okay, you're okay. And then it was like, okay. But I'm still going to cry though. So thank you all for sitting and listening to this. And I promise my YouTube will not just turn into a sad channel. I just, I don't know. I'm just being honest with where I am right now. And I'm hoping to look back on this one day and be like, wow, Lord, he did it. Victory, healing. <laughs> Life really did go on. Like I need 
to be able to look back and just say, wow, life went on and you were okay and it all worked out. So, yeah. I should get in the bed because I have to work in the morning. And yeah, so if you're still here, or however I'm posting this, if you're still here, thanks for listening and keep me in your prayers. I mean, life is hard for everyone right now. So if you totally forget to pray for me because you got your own stuff going on, I'm not mad at you, okay? Because when people be asking me to pray right now, I'd be like, Ugh, pick somebody else, okay? <laughs> I don't mean that seriously if you've asked me to pray, but just know, I just be like, my tank is just so full right now or maybe empty. I'd be like, I'm sorry. I can barely find the words to pray for myself. But, yeah. If you think of me, pray for me. If not, I love you. In the next video, since I decided to take 20 minutes on this one, the next video will be me talking through all of the footage that I have to share with you all over the last few months. Personal training, all of it. Okay. Thanks. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> Bye.